Welcome to this presentation and thank you for your interest in this work. I also want to thank the organizers and the reviewers of the paper. I have a long title, but also a very short title, Accelerated Convolutions. Um, the presentation is about a data staging algorithm to accelerate the polynomial evaluation and differentiation at power series and multiple double precision. As you can see here, the outline, uh, the presentation has three parts. After stating the problems, I will present the application of algorithmic differentiation to the problem of evaluating and differentiating polynomials at several variables. So the results will show that uh, teraflop performance is obtained and that GPU acceleration can compensate for the cost overhead uh, caused by the power series arithmetic and the multiple double precision arithmetic. Here is our problem then. So specifically, we are given one polynomial in several variables. For every variable, there is a power series. Uh, the output consists of the value of that polynomial and its gradient evaluated at all the power series. Uh, we want to do this because computing power series will tell us the nearest location of the closest singularity in a polynomial homotopy defined by one parameter. So in general, so this is a computationally intensive step in a new robust uh, path tracking algorithm. Uh, for the broader significance of this research, uh, this is the application of multiple double precision arithmetic on general purpose graphics processing units. So we will apply algorithmic differentiation. Um, so in 2012, uh, nine years ago, at this very same workshop, I presented results on the NVIDIA C2050 GPU. So that GPU is still up and running. And um, we compare our algorithms on these five different GPUs, and in particular with a particular focus on the P100 and the V1 and the V100, the Pascal and the Volta. This uh, methodology of working with five different GPUs has the advantage of avoiding the unfair comparison with the CPU. Um, in particular, we will actually also compare the theoretical performance ratios. Um, so we should expect, if everything goes well, that the code that runs on the Volta is about 1.68 times faster than Pascal. So we compare the ratios of the wall clock time. So my main reference is actually on top. Uh, so this is the Campari software, uh, which was released about five years ago. Uh, we will run that code on uh, the GPUs as Campari stands for CUDA Multi-Precision Arithmetic Library. Three other references of three different areas. Uh, so the first paper is in computer algebra, where this problem also occurs. Um, in contrast to computer algebra, we are here using double precision arithmetic, as in numerical analysis. Uh, the second paper is an illustration of the significance to science and in particular mechanical engineering, uh, where polynomial systems must be solved in the design of mechanisms. 
The third paper is a paper on high performance computing where double, double and quad double precision is compared with more general alternative types of arbitrary precision arithmetic. I should say that double double arithmetic uh, is very competitive uh, in that study. All right, then, what is our problem? Um, so, in short, the short title of this presentation, we are multiplying two power series truncated to the same degree. And that multiplication is also called a convolution. So in the natural parallel algorithm, every thread computes one component of the output. And throughout, we will assume that we have as many threads as we have output coefficients. So the problem with this very first parallel algorithm is that every thread will do a different number of computations. The first thread for the constant coefficients, there's only one multiplication. The last thread will do as many additions and multiplications as the degree. So to avoid this thread divergence, we will insert zeros when the input data is copied in shared memory. In particular, as the picture here shows, the second input vector, all the coefficients are actually shifted. Um, and with this padding, we can avoid the thread divergence, as is shown here on this next slide. So now we have the um, same algorithm in sense, but the upper bound, so this upper bound here can now be replaced uh, by the same upper bound, the constant to the degree, as is done over here in the algorithm. So This convolution is an operation that is quadratic in the degree. If we have sufficiently many threads, and we assume we will always have, then this quadratic cost is reduced to a linear cost. So this is the first expected speed up factor that we will uh, observe. So then we apply the reverse mode of algorithmic differentiation. So here um, introduced or, or shown with an example of a product of a monomial uh, of a coefficient A, which is also actually a power series with uh, a monomial that involves five variables. So we compute forward products, backward products, and cross products. And as you can see in this example, um, the total cost is proportional to three times the number of variables. But the forward and the backward products, they can be computed in parallel. So if you have sufficiently many blocks of threads, there are only five steps that are needed. So there's some more justification that needs to be done. For that, you can look at the paper. But uh, first, uh, another result is that if we have sufficiently many blocks of threads, then the evaluation and the differentiation of one monomial takes as many steps as the number of variables that are involved. Over to a polynomial. And I will introduce this again with an example, uh, three monomials and a constant. Obviously, every monomial can be evaluated independently. So that's the first parallelism. And then we had the parallelism from the previous slide. And all the convolutions are arranged for this example here, so that the convolutions that can happen in parallel occur on the same line. 
So, and you can see that this polynomial has six variables, but it suffices, there are only four lines. So only four steps will suffice to compute all the 21 convolutions, provided that we have sufficiently many threads available. So this is the key idea in the uh, parallel algorithm. And to make it all run very efficiently, we have to think about the data layout. So we will store all the data in one long array. So here for the example shown, we have the input data, the input power series coefficients. So every block here uh, essentially represents a sequence of doubles with all the consecutive coefficients of the power series. So we have the input that comes first, then we have the forward products, the backward products, and the cross products. So that space will store at the end of the runs, at the end of the kernel launches, the output space will store all the results of the convolutions. So for a complex number, we have a real double and an imaginary double. Instead of storing the complex numbers as a sequence of real followed by imaginary, real followed by imaginary, we will have two separate arrays, one array for the real parts, one array for the imaginary parts. For the multiple doubles, we will have as many arrays as there are doubles in the multiple double number. So if you have a high part and a low part and a double double, we will have two arrays. So that data layout allows for memory coalescing. Threads that are adjacent to each other will access data that is adjacent in main memory. So we will load in one instruction, we will load all the input coefficients of one series in one single instruction. So this staging of the data is very important for the efficient execution. All right, so then how is this organized? Uh, so the number of threads equals the number of coefficients. So one block of threads does one convolution. So on the example, it took four kernel launchers to compute all the 21 convolutions. And in general, we will prearrange uh, the definition of the convolution jobs. So the theoretical results is that what matters is the number of variables actually the largest number of variables in one monomial. And that will determine an upper bound uh, on the theoretical speed up. So in practice, um, every convolution job is defined by three coordinates. Coordinates that define the input locations and the third coordinate provides, defines the location of the output of the convolution job. So we have three indexed arrays. So every triplet is also represented as three different arrays. And that is pre-computed once and for all. So this is actually the data structure of the accelerated algorithm to compute all the convolutions which is a sequence of convolution jobs. Then we have the addition. And the addition operation, I did not formulate a kernel for this because it's very obvious how the addition works. And it's actually 
executed as an update. Uh, so an addition job is defined by a pair of two coordinates with the location of the input that is added to the or updated to the location in the update. Defining these, these jobs is done recursively. Uh, so we have uh, the value of the polynomial. We also have the all, all the derivatives. So we have a recursive definition that is done offline before the kernel launches where all the addition jobs are defined. And because of this three summation here, we have the logarithmic factor in the overall cost. So the number of steps that is actually the minimal number of steps given sufficiently many threads that are available. And that then also gives the uh, theoretical speed up uh, provided that you have many more monomials than the number of variables. All right, so this is the theoretical part, uh, the definition of the algorithms. So now let's look at the computational results. Um, we have two main parameters that we can play with. Uh, the length of the polynomial, the capital N, and then the number of variables per monomial. So we have three polynomials. Um, and for every polynomial, we list the number of convolution jobs and the number of addition jobs. Um, so the first polynomial was kind of generated to have a number of uh, at least trillion number of doubles floating point operations. The second polynomial has actually more variables per polynomial than there are monomials, uh, or kind of the proportion is larger. So this second polynomial is more convolution heavy. The last polynomial has actually many more terms. Uh, so this is a very sparse polynomial, only two variables per monomial at most. So there we have many more additions. So we compared five um, graphics processing units. So on the first polynomial, uh, we ran, um, actually we developed everything on five different graphics cards. Um, you can see that the, the middle one is Pascal and uh, the, the wall clock time is expressed in milliseconds. So actually all times are in milliseconds. So we have about one second on Pascal. You can see we can do it a lot faster. Well, there's a significant gain on Volta. And on the first card, which is at least 10 years old, uh, we can actually have a speed up of a factor 20. So very roughly in 10 years, uh, GPUs have increased the 20 fold. Um, with, based on this experiment here. Um, what is important is that the ratios of the wall clock times of Pascal over Volta actually match uh, the ratios of the theoretical double peak performance. Um, and we actually have uh, peak performance. I should also say that for this experiment, the degree um, was the largest degree that could be taken with a tenfold increase of precision. So here we work with about 160 decimal places. Um, this could be done, this was because of the limitations of shared memory. All right, we do have a trillion number of um, operations. Um, so we can count this uh, based on the number of operations that we need to do in a convolution in a, in, and in an addition. Also based on the number of uh, convolution jobs and addition jobs. And then we can also count how many operations one 
uh, multiplication costs. So here you see kind of why teraflop performance is kind of interesting, because then if you want to increase the precision tenfold, your cost here is going to increase a thousandfold. Um, so I will not in great detail go over these computations, uh, but based on these computations, we actually do exceed uh, the teraflop performance on Pascal. So now let us examine the scalability. So we have two parameters that we can scale up. Uh, we have the precision when we leave the degree fixed, and we can actually also double the number of coefficients. Um, so a recommended minimal degree is kind of 31. You can definitely run it for power series less than 31, but 31 is kind of the obvious choice because of the warp size. So in the second experiment, we will double the number of coefficients and see what happens with the observed execution types. Um, the plots are logarithmic. Um, you see that in double arithmetic, uh, the bars, so for the three polynomials, they kind of differ. So the shape of the polynomials in some sense matters in double precision. But then when we increase the precision eightfold, then actually uh, the difference doesn't matter that much anymore. So here, uh, the difference in execution times it seems to be less than uh, with the uh, double precision. Another interesting ex observation is that going from double to double double would normally, normally you would expect a five-fold increase in uh, the execution times. But since double double is already quite computation intensive, you actually do not observe a fivefold increase, but here it's more a little bit over twofold. And you can also see that doubling the precision each step leads to a very predictable uh, increase in execution times. Uh, I should have pointed out that for this experiment, so we stopped at eightfold precision, then actually we can work uh, with number of threads in each block equal to 192, which is a fine number as well. So problem scales well when we double the precision, mainly because the problem becomes compute bound. Then look at the other scalability parameter, um, doubling the number of coefficients of the series. So we go from 32 coefficients to 63, uh, to 64, and then we double again. Um, in tenfold precision, we observe that uh, the bars actually, this is a logarithmic plot again, uh, the bars actually go up by a little bit over two units, um, which is, actually very good uh, as the algorithms have a quadratic cost. Um, so we would expect a fourfold increase. Uh, but this is because we can actually, with the parallelism, uh, we can absorb uh, the one of the factors, uh, that one of the cost factors that comes from working with power series. So we have a very good uh, scalability here as well. Finally, my conclusions. Uh, so we can compensate for the cost overhead caused by power series and multiple double precision arithmetic. Um, and thanks to um, careful staging of the data that is trying to get an optimal memory coalescing. We have teraflop performance and the ratios of the observed wall clock times are actually very close to the ratios of the theoretical peak performances. 
So the broader impact of this work, um, while specifically for polynomial system solving, uh, this could also have a benefit for all computations that require multi-precision arithmetic. So I thank you for your attention.